Okay, um, let me just check the attendance. Romero? Present, sir. Okay, uh, Amos? Amos is not here. Okay, Sharon? Good morning, sir. Okay, uh, Finny has? Sir. Okay. Pierce? Yes, sir. Athel? Okay, yeah, I see that. Jim? Present, sir. Samson? Okay. Yeah. Ami? Steven? I'm here. Mm -hmm. Walter? All right. Kanae? Uh, Dominic? All right. The handsome Dominic there. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> Albert, okay. Hoff, okay. Yeah, all right, Albert. Grace, she's not here yet. Oh, someone is waiting. Okay, Albert is okay. Um, Paul? Yes, sir. Okay, Jumpy. So still waiting for two more people. All right. Um, As I said yesterday, we are going to just review the previous lessons. Uh, I know that you know it's kind of a feeling that you you are confused, and when we are learning a lot of things, and you may be feeling like, oh, there are a lot of things that I need to memorize and understand. But if I have to summarize. Uh, Okay, as I, I was uh, reading your group chatting message, but anyway, okay, uh, I got lost uh, where I was. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry yeah, for it, my apologies. Uh, it's okay. So if we summarize it, there are just a few things that you have to understand. So don't, don't be confused. And especially when you are coming to the point that we have probably a lot of exceptions then people people don't like it but hebrew language is always like this so you need to really need to have um, flexibility so let me move on to uh give you a summary <clears throat> Okay. Let me work on this. Uh... All right. Can you see the whiteboard? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Uh, no. Uh, why is All right, I'm ready. Come on. It's not working. Okay. Okay, the, the first, first important uh, lesson that we do deal with we had to do with was a uh, fixed form and fixed form so when it comes to different pgn then you need to make sure that you already know is by indicator of 3msg of fixed form and 3fsg 
and those things. So it's always good that we start with a fix and prefix. So you you are required to memorize this. So who's gonna help me to do this? Sir, I cannot see anything on whiteboard. What about you? Others? I, it's, there's blank. nothing on it. It's blank. Are you going to write something on it, sir? Uh, all right, let me do it again. What about now? Yes. Yeah, we see it now, sir. Not in now, sir. Can you still see? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, gonna ask Stephen. Stephen, uh, let's just do prefix form first. So, in terms of prefix form, you need an example. Okay, let's consider this one is a, a Hebrew verb. Okay, so what, what, what PGN? Could you just work on the PGN first? Perfect so you, you want me to read the root and the, the ending on, on the- Yeah, the... yeah, the indicator, so perfect form. Let's say 3MSZ, okay? okay. Yep. Uh, what is it? Yod. Yod, where? Uh, in, the, uh, in the beginning. In the beginning, yeah. And then what is next? Uh, three F at G. Mm -hmm. And uh, T. Okay. T. Yeah. Tab. Okay. Yeah. Tab. Tab. Um, three. Uh, three. Uh, two M at G. Mm -hmm. Two M. Uh, Tab. Mm hmm through uh two f at g uh-huh uh ta uh-huh um, no one c at g are you sure are you done with two f at g ah no no they are beginning with jot okay what, what what else can you say uh, in the in um, the end of the two uh -huh. M and D on the end have the yod. Yod, is yes. it here and yod, right? And uh, one C F G is uh, uh, Aleph. Aleph. Okay. Then I'm gonna move on to the plural form. Kanae, can you help us? Hello. Okay, go ahead. Would you just get closer to your microphone? <laughs> Sorry, 3MPL. 3MPL. Then Yod. Yod. The beginning uh, verb, red uh -huh. letter. 3FPL. Is it all? Then what is the difference between 3MSG and 3MPL? Uh, no, no. Ooh. Who <laughs> what? Ooh, Shurek. What? Shurek. Where? At the end. Okay. Go ahead. Then G F P L. Three F P L. Tough before the root letters. Uh huh. Then. Nun na. <laughs> How to say na? Na ending. Okay. Then Go two, ahead. Two M P L. M P L. Taf, before Taf. the root. Uh -huh. Then Shurek, and at the Ending. end. Good job. Then to FPL. Mm -hmm. Then Taf, before Taf. root letter. Uh -huh. Then Na, at the end. Okay, Na ending. All then right. Then CPL. Uh -huh. Then what is it? Noon. Noon. Before the red letter. All right. So, are you done? Yes. Right. This is quite important. You need to really, uh, you need to be familiar with all those things. Although, many times you will come up 
with a 3M SZ, but you need to know how to analyze other forms, uh, other form, no, other PGNs. Okay, let's do a fixed form. I know uh, seems like Jimmy's busy uh, looking at the fixed form. <laughs> All right, come on, uh, Jim. Let's start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That's a good summary. Ah. Good ah, summary. Ah. Two, 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 three, 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 three. Where? Yeah. Where? Sure. This line way. So this way. Ah. Uh, what is that? <laughs> this. Because. And then the first one is blank, and the second one it starts. Three M S T. Yeah, yeah, but Three where are you supposed F to put these, those things? Attached to them to know where in the verb? Sir, in a fix, uh, in the last. All right, right, right. So we have uh, a fix, then the location is at the end. All right? Yeah. So yeah. three, yeah. what is that? A fix three MSZ. Three MSZ, so nothing. Three FS. Three FSZ. Yeah. So what is the special yeah, about the, the PGN of, of fixed form? Is there anything that is different from fixed form? I think there is one difference between a fixed and prefix in terms of PGN. Do you remember? So we have 3MSG, 3FSG, 2MSG, 2FSG, and then 1CSG. Go ahead. 3CPL. 3 CPL, this, this is something that uh, you need to remember, right? That is different because in terms of prefix from flutter, we have masculine and feminine, but a fixed flutter, we have only common. So that's the only difference that you need to remember. And then go ahead, two, what, what two, is next? 2 MPL, 2 MPL, 2 FPL, 2 mm -hmm. F, two F, two two mm -hmm. CPL, 2 uh -huh. CPL. Two PPL? Sorry, one C. No, one CPL. Yeah, right. So nothing. And then the next one, three F S G A, ta, t, t, u, m, ten, nu. So yeah, those things are the basic information, but it's very important. So please remember all those things, and let's move on to uh, missing letter rules. Um, Phineas, can you give us a little explanation of uh, missing letter rule number one? Uh, the missing letter, uh, mm -hmm. it has a prefix yod or the prefix and then uh, under the prefix mm -hmm. uh, that is jere mark, it is referring to the missing letter uh, yod. The mm -hmm. first letter of the root letter, sir. So number one is about what? What kind of a verb you said? Uh, it is. It's your, what your kind of verb? verb? Yeah, first yod verb. So you first need to verb. first yod verb. And then what are the indicators of first yod verb? Prefix. Uh, and jere, sir. Okay, so prefix forms such as yod. Yod. And, and, the and then yod can be like, as we study, prefix pronoun tav. And what else? Uh, tav. <laughs> like uh, alef. Alef. And? Alef. One more. Yod, Tav, Alev, you, you are missing one. The last one, one CPL. One CPL. Uh. Yod, Tav, 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 Alev. Yod, Tav, 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 what? Uh, noon. Noon, yeah, so you, yes. you're missing noon. So, Although the yod is the most popular one, then you need to be aware of other possibilities that the yod can be replaced by other uh, prefix pronouns such as ta, alep, 
nun. So it's not always the yod, but under the perfect pronoun, as you said, mm. but 3MSG is quite a um, popular PGN. So most of the time you will deal with this. So, all right, as you said, we need to have, what is it? Tere. Tere. Where? Under the perfect pronoun. pronoun. Okay, and then I'm not supposed to put three here. Why? Because we need to have only two. So we need to erase one. Okay. Um, so this is the missing letter rule. So uh, when you have only two remaining consonants after removing non root letters, such as verb conversive and perfect pronoun, like the yod, and if you have only two, then you need to look at the vowel point. Where? Under the prefix pronoun. I don't want to say the yod all the time, but most of the time. Okay, let's move on to, uh, oh, and then do you remember any exemplary word for this? <laughs> the, the verb that begins with the yod. yod. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Take your time. I know that you didn't expect this question today. And uh, see. seems like everybody is busy. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to be the next one to answer? And then you just look at your previous lessons and I know where you are. Okay. <laughs> Think about it. Yes, I know you, you, you know. Uh, what was the verb that we are dealing with, especially when we are talking about the first yod verb? Uh, what is that? <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Somebody said? Yalak. Uh, Yatza. Right. Yatza. It's a, it's a quite typical word for this. And then oh. somebody said what? Natab. Uh-huh. I felt what? Steven said Natab. I'm not taking the credit. <laughs> natab? Natab? <laughs> it's, it's, it's the first noon Bob, is it? Natab? I haven't remember I haven't memorized those words. Natab? What is it, Natab? Natan. Natan, ah, okay, Natan. Natan is first new book, but first you the book. Stephen, what did you say? I said just uh, not Natan. Uh -huh. What is that? Just uh, the, the one you wrote. Oh, Yatza. Uh, what about Yala? No, 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 not Yala. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Have you memorized Yada? Yada. Yeah. No. Yeah. Right, no. Yada. And then, um, but those things are typical first year the verb, but there was a exceptional verb that follows the first year the verb pattern. Halak. 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 Don't forget to put the final form. Don't put cap here like this. Otherwise, you will lose 0.5 mark, okay? So always remember to use. Half mark. All right, so halak is quite a strange word. Why? Being a, the a first it's insecure. Per, it always follows the rule for the first year of the verb. So you need to remember halak as a special case here. Okay, that was the missing letter rule number one. And then move on to then number two. Uh, okay, uh, Samson, let me know number two. What do um, you know about this? The hollow verb. No? Is a hollow verb? What do you mean by hollow verb? Okay, so hollow verb usually like, um, uh, one of the examples I know in our homework, we usually have like the via vo or something like that. And usually when we take away all the, all everything like the verb conversive and stuff, or and uh, the prefix complement, it'll leave us with just two letters left. So like, uh, 
the, uh, or, uh, sorry, vet and um, Aleph. And then what we need to do is look for the missing letter. So what we'll do is we'll look um, under the, we'll look at the vowel complement before the the root letter. So if it's a, oh, if it's, I think if it's a commit, then if it's commit, then uh, I think the, 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 we, we add the vowel in between the, the two continents. So it'll be, Vet, Polem, uh, Aleph. Okay, sounds like you have a quite solid understanding, you know, as if you are really visualizing the whiteboard that you have memorized. Good one. All right, so uh, number two is about hello. Hello, Bob. Okay, and then the indicator of the hello bulb is, as you said, after removing non root letters like bob conversive and prefix pronoun, that we have only two. And what 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 is the most in, uh, outstanding indicator for the hello? The pointing, which would be like a commit. All right, under commit the, yeah. here under the prefix pronoun. Uh, yeah. Not always the yod. It could be even tab al left nun. Okay. All right, so, and then the, the exemplary verbs for this. You said bo. Yeah. Anything else that you know? Oh, oh yeah, that's the only one I know. Haven't, that's, that's haven't you memorized the easiest, any other? That's the easiest one for me in my head, like whenever right. I think of the hollow verb. Yeah. Sure, yeah, I think that's the very obvious one. But have you ever memorized the other hollow bulb that takes either holem, shurek, or hiregyod in the, in the middle? What about kum? Have you ever memorized the word kum? Yes. Yeah, kum. Yeah, yeah that's another hollow bulb. Mm -hmm. Kum. Why? Because it is taking shurek in the middle. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right, so you need to understand this one is also a hollow bulb. What about um, anything else? Mm. How no? about mood? Mood, 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 yeah, mood. mood. Uh, have, have you memorized all of this one? Mood. Yes, uh, there, there's one we haven't memorized. Good, yes. This it's one, called, mood. Uh, mood. The mood. Dalet at the end, though. Mood. No, mood. not mood. Mood. Should be mood. There's a mood, and, but there's also a mood. Okay. So a mood. This one means to die. So you are right. Those words are categorized under hollow bulb. So it's not only for bo, bo but kum and mood. You need to expect that, all right, you will be able to see comments under the perfect pronoun. Mm -hmm. And then you will see cop mem. Okay, so you are familiar with this form, right? Mm -hmm. Am I right? Because yes, it's sir. about in a bed and then I left. But sometimes you will see this. And sometimes you will see this. So it's not only about ball. So you need to apply the same law to whatever is understood as a hollow ball. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Professor, I have a question about that one. Uh -huh. um, usually, so when, when the word, when they write out the word, like for example, like the kum, uh -huh. it'll come out like via. Uh, and then um, Q, will they have the um, Shurek already? I mean like um, <laughs> the ball pointing for it? <coughs> Excuse me. So or, are you talking about uh, Shurek? Yeah, the Shurek. I, I'm just asking like, um, is am I overthinking it when I'm trying to figure out like how do you know if it's a Holem or a Shurek? Or we just need to remember our vocabulary when it comes to hollow verbs? And we'll know whether it's a shurek yeah, or holem. Yeah, it depends on your vocabulary. So oh. as I said, when you memorize bo, it's always a holem. 
Kum is already oh, oh, always sh uh, Shurek. Mut is Shurek. And there is other one like uh, Bin. Bin is uh, also um, uh, another uh, hollow meaning to understand and something like this. So it even has a Hiragyot in the, in the middle. So that is your vocabulary. But when it comes to, let's say, if you are talking about uh, the vowel point for, let's say, first consonant, and when it is combined together with vowel conversive and prefix pronoun, then as you said, via bo, right? That is the, um, the example word for, uh, what is it, uh, the hello bob. So in that case, you will absolutely have comments under the prefix pronoun. But when it comes to the vowel pointing for the first consonant, then it varies. Actually, it sometimes takes different types of vowel pointing. So that's why I'm not really asking you to memorize it. But for the affix form, and that's what you need to pay attention to it. Because in case of a hollow bob, as I said, three MSG hollow bob is what? Do you remember this? Three so MSG affix form is nothing. Ba. ba. And then this one is identical to M S Z participle form. So you need to understand that this one will appear as three MS affix and then MSG participle. So that is identical. So whenever you have only this bet and alet together with the comet, then you need to put two possibilities, which is three MSG affix and MSG participle. But don't be confused here. This one is obviously taking the prefix pronoun. So this one should be prefix form. Okay. So in this case, the bow point is what matters. But when it comes to those hollow bob missing letter rules, then you don't need to really memorize uh, the bow point for the first root letter. Okay, because everything is very uh, obvious and straightforward. You have what? The prefix pronoun, then that's prefix form. And then you need to expect comments under the prefix pronoun. That's, that those things are what you have to memorize all the time. Okay, Samson? Thank all you, right, Thank you. Uh, then let's move on to number three. What is it? Uh, gonna ask the Hebrew scholar James. James. It's first noon. All right, first noon yeah. verb. And give me some explanation. Uh, when you take away the components and then you see only two root letter left, uh -huh. and you see the cash in the first root letter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's so, assimilation. All right. It should be coming for together with what? What form? What? Prefix. What form? Prefix. prefix form. And then you need to expect a prefix pronoun such as uh, yod, yod, aleph, aleph, taf, taf, nun. nun. So yes. one more time, it's not always the yod. Okay. So, right. What is the special about this rule compared to the first two rules, missing letter rules? James. Uh, you will not see vowel points under prefix pronoun, but only assimilation. All right, it's not a, a good answer, but you, you, you got the point. All right, you will take a vowel point, but it's not what matters. That's mm -hmm. the point. All right, James is telling us that the, the first two, two missing letter rules are dealing with the, uh, the bow point under the prefix pronoun, like tsere and then kamet. Those things are quite important. But in case of first noon verb, then, oh. <laughs> Jun, wake up. Okay. Uh, you don't need to pay attention to what kind of uh, prefix, uh, the, uh, the, the PowerPoint do you have under the prefix pronoun. 
but you also need to you just need to pay attention to the presence of the dark dagesh porte then it is called assimilation so in terms of the indicator the outstanding indicator of those uh, missing letter rules you need to remember zere comets and assimilation okay so then what is the exemplary word for Nathan. this Nathan Nathan and Nafal right Nathan and okay good job do you have any questions so far can you move on yeah all right we just learned the last one i think it was yesterday number four uh paul can you help us oh, oh last one is is so hard to me sir to explain <laughs> all right but uh, as just let us know as uh, the, whatever you understand do you do you remember anything about it uh i cannot recall sir <laughs> all right it's okay it's okay um then gonna ask amos sorry I amos is not here i'm here <laughs> then who oh, is yeah. this talk speaking right now who are you what? amos <laughs> <It's> spirit <laughs> exactly. right, amos. Amos, okay, let's go. Okay, so like the fourth, like a missing, like a letter rule, like on the, uh, if they, if the verb is using like prefix form, uh -huh. prefix form, and like the the vowel pointing under the prefix, uh, is other than is anything other than tere or comets. All right. And Can then, you give us an example? An example. That says what? uh so for example let's have i'm like, looking for a verb in my vocabulary <laughs> okay so let's no no i'm asking you yes what what kind of um bow point can you expect when you say any bow point other than zere and kamet or pata or hirak anything good job good job very good uh, this these are the typical words that i was expecting from you all right mm -hmm. pata or hirek hirek uh, although we say any any bow point other than sere and kamet those two bow points are quite popular so pata or hirek if you see those things then okay what is this for what kind of verb uh, if the third root letter mm -hmm. is he correct so you said third he yes Verb. So, where do you expect the missing letter then? The missing letter is he, that will be gone. Yeah, from where? Excuse me? From, from where? From, uh, I mean, the last. Okay, last one. That's why it is called third. Yeah. Okay, out of number one, number two, number three, we have uh, three root letters. Mm -hmm. So, he should be the the last component of the word so mm -hmm. so you you need to expect that the third of he will be gone so mm -hmm. in this case what uh example do you have for example uh we have like a, the root of mm -hmm. verb let's take allah which is to ascend go up but i'm looking for third hebel right allah 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 yeah allah uh, it's are you, are you talking yeah it's about it's, this one it's ayin lamet he ayin right, lamet right right you are right yeah. then you are not supposed to pronounce it allah it's allah oh yeah. i i pronounce like the he lah the sound allah that's what i no, said no 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 mm. ah allah yeah all right but when you put this uh, lexicon form, it's Allah. Okay. Okay. Mm. So, yeah. But anyway, um, you are right. This one is a good example. Mm -hmm. It's very good. Oh, hold on a second. Just, would you give me one minute? Sorry.
Sorry. Okay. So yeah, these are the four missing letter rule. So you need to memorize this. <sighs> okay. I hope you understand everything. All right, then let's move on to uh, um, the characteristics of different types of forms. All right, we have learned prefix. Ami, yes. could you let me know what kind of a form have we studied so far? Uh -oh. As I said, prefix and prefix. Affix. Affix. And? Form. Uh, it's like a verb conjunction or something? No? No, verb conjunction, verb reversive, verb conversive, those things are always considered as a special feature. But in terms of form, then you need to remember what it means by form. So like prefix and affix and what else? You, you have learned two more things. Oh, I cannot remember. Okay, good answer. Yeah. <laughs> Honest and very com confident. <laughs> uh, all right, let me give you an example, Ami. I think you will remember. Okay, yes. this form takes whole name above the root letter, the first root letter, whole name. If you have whole name, plane or defectiva, I'm saying that uh, if you have three root letters, and then if it yes. is taking whole name above it, the first root letter, uh, that yes. is indicator of what? What form? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. You're almost there? Ah, uh, yes. Um, okay. Participle. Great. Participle is a form. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, yes. Hi. Participle. Mm -hmm. So if you have whole name above the first root letter, then that is the indicator. So you need to always in the, have this map, mm -hmm. right? Yes. This is a good summary. Hi. But as I just said, in case of hollow verb, you got to be careful. Why? Hello, Bob. Bo. This one will okay. Hello, in case of hello, Bob, is that uh, it did not take whole name here. Hello, Bob takes comments and then it's pronounced like this ba, and mm -hmm. then it is. Identical to this one has three two possibilities. As I said, three M, oh no, three M S Z affix form, and then the other one is M S Z participle. Form. So when we are talking about participle form, you need to remember these two. As a uh, the typical information you need to remember this whole name where in the first root letter but in case of a hollow verb then it takes comments under the first root letter and then that is the indicator of 3ms of fixed form so 3ms of fixed form hollow verb is identical to msg participle okay in terms of a participle all right, you have this whole name and then you have nothing at the end, then that is MSG participle. But what about FSG participle and then MPA participle and FPA participle? And what do you expect as an indicator? How do you differentiate MSG participle from FSG, MPA, FPA? Do you have anything else apart from whole name? I like no. your silence. I don't know. Okay, as if I'm dealing with a new thing. Come on, you need to remember this too. It's not only uh, affix and prefix uh, PGN, but you have to remember this. In case of a participle form, participle form doesn't have person 
So third person, second person, and first person, we don't have that. But it has only gender and number. That's why we have four uh, forms. Masculine singular will take holem and nothing at the end. Okay? And then, Sharon, do you remember anything? Sharon. Yes. Do you uh, know the indicator of feminine singular participle? Kamet uh, Yes, great. Kamet he ending. Yes. What about masculine flutter? Hirang yo de mem im im ending. Yeah. Great. What about feminine flutter? Ot ending. What's ending? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah, these are what I was expecting. So, I mean, once again, you, you are not simply dependent on the information of Holem. So, Holem is, of course, number one uh, indicator for participle. But at the same time, you need to remember the ending. So, in order for you to recognize the gender and number. All right? So once again, if it has nothing, taking holem for the first root letter, then that's a MSG participle. But you have holem, you have holem, and comets hair ending, then that is feminine singular. And if you have holem here and im ending, then that is Participle, but what participle? Masculine plural. And you have whole name here and uh, ot ending here. Then that is the indicator of feminine plural participle. Is that clear? Okay. Yes. I have a question, sir. Okay, Abel. For the translation purposes, these particles. For the most part, end in ing, right? Yeah, right. Okay, just wondering. Yeah, you don't need to. Okay, in case of uh, uh, the analysis table for the last part, which is meaning, you are not supposed to put any subject there, like he, she, although you are going to put ing, addition okay. to the meaning of the verb, like study, then you are going to put studying without Perfect. putting any subject. So that is a um, quite good thing that, that you need to remember. Thank you for the question, Ethel. Yeah, that's important part too. Okay, did you understand what I'm saying? In terms mm -hmm. of a meaning, all right? That is a difference between, I think it's something different and unique or compa in comparison with prefix form and affix form. Since it has, uh, it, it doesn't take any, any uh, person so you are not supposed to put he, she, it, you know, they, those things for meaning. But just simply add ing to the meaning of the verb. And that's it. In terms of the tense, the tense, I mean, uh, it depends on the main um, verb. So I'm saying that it depends on the context. So it has no tense at all, all right, by itself. Thank you. Um, then let's move on to the la another one, which is the last form that we have studied. What is it? Anyone else? Pronominal suffixes. Pronominal suffix? Yeah. I I infinitive. <laughs> right. Pronominal suffix is another thing that you have to remember. Okay. And that's... Um, quite important one, and then that's uh, something that you have to memorize too, but that is not understood as a that's form. Fair. When we are talking about form, then it should be either prefix, affix, participle, and then I think it's uh, Penny has just to mention that, um, what was that? Infinitive? Infinitive construct. Right, infinitive construct. Infinitive construct. So the abbreviation is INF dot C O N dot. Why is it important for you to put 
construct there because you have two types of infinitive forms. One is infinitive construct, the other one is infinitive absolute. 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 So we have just learned about infinitive construct and I think you will be able to learn another form which is infinitive absolute in Hebrew too. So it's not a matter of your consideration right now. So just infinitive construct. So in terms of infinitive constructs indicator, then what do we expect? The peers, do you remember anything about this? Uh, there is going to be a preposition attached to the beginning of the verb. Is it preposition? All right. So such as what? Uh, two. Uh, in two. English, that would be two. So it would be le. La, um, la which would be lamed with a shua, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vocal but shua. it's not always appearing as uh, together with the shua. Sometimes you detect different types of uh, bow points, but that is a good example, like uh, lamed and then shua. But mm -hmm. lamed, the presence of lamed is important. And then? Yes. Um, there's no PGN. Uh, no PGN, right? Good. No PGN. It has no PGN. But what, what is the other indicator? I think that is more important than the presence of lamed in terms the of other, vowel points. Uh, in terms of vowel pointing, past. <laughs> Do you remember the, the martial art, Chinese martial art? And then I gave you the exemplary you know, um, idea. Um, <laughs> Shoot, you've yeah. given us a lot of martial arts. Uh, <laughs> yes. No, need to. Trying to remember all the moves. And last points. And then the, the second one is, you know, Shua. Shua. And, and Holland. Holland. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Pierce. Huh? So you need to remember Shua for the first little letter and then Holland for the second little letter. So when I say, right, what is the indicators of infinitive construct, then you always need to answer first with this shua and holen. And then it's good that you, you know that it comes with a preposition, but it's not always. That's why it's not a good idea for you to be dependent on the information. Like, oh, if you have uh, lamet and any other preposition, attached to the verb, then, oh, it's most likely infinite numbers. That is a really good, uh, what is the start, but not, it doesn't work all the time. So you need to always remember shua and holem. Are you clear? I am okay. clear. To, thank you. Okay, so. so it's good that you mentioned that it has no PGN. Good one. So, but when, what about the meaning? Then what are you going to do with the meaning? Um, so it would be to something is almost like the most right. basic form so, of the verb to walk or to listen or to... Right, hold. exactly. So you are not supposed to put the subject again here. So in terms of the subject of participle form and infinitive construct, they, they take no, they take no uh, uh, subject. So in case of an infinitive construct, just to put to and the meaning of the verb. All right, so uh, like uh, I'm sorry. All right, in case of Amar, then you are going to put to say, okay? Just the to say, no tense at all. Okay, that's that's important uh, part, but also you need to remember an exemplary. Uh, exceptional case for this. When it comes to indicators of uh, infinitive construct form, tell me just this, shua, holem. But it doesn't really work all the time in terms of um, exceptional cases, such as, do you remember anything? I know James is smiling, so uh, James, Hebrew scholar James, I want to always address you as a Hebrew scholar. Hey, what do you know? Can Tell you me. repeat your question again? <sighs> Disappointing. <laughs> Hebrew scholar, you don't, you don't pay attention to me because you understand everything? No, no, no. Okay, uh, James, I was asking you guys about uh, an exceptional case for 
the infinitive construct. I think it's Jod. Right. Yeah. First Jod Bob. First Jod Bob will not take this indicator of Shua Holen. Why? Because the first Jod will be dropped. Yes. It will be now, tough ending. Expect? Yes. You have tough ending. Tough ending. So you are going to have only two consonants because the first yod verb, is the first yod will be disappearing. And you have top ending, then that is the indicator of infinite construct first yod verb. So this is uh, something that you have to memorize as an exceptional case. But praise the Lord, as uh, Pierce just said, normally it will come with a preposition like lamed in the beginning. Okay, I think uh, that's it. I think I need to let you take your final exam right now. No, final exam. Uh, translation quiz. Uh, talking about participle form, participle form, uh, always remember whole name above the first root letter, but there are some um, important indicators too. Normally participle will come with other components such as Definite article he, which means the in English, right? If you see a word, a verb taking whole name, at the same time it is taking he. Definite article he beginning, then that is most likely participle. And then it takes, it tends to take uh, IPP, independent personal pronoun, like ani, anoki, ata, atu. Do you remember who is he, he is she, right? Those things are called IPP, independent personal pronoun. So if you see a word that looks like a verb and that is taking whole name above the first root letter, and then it is taking, appearing to with IPP, then it's most likely participle form too. And participle comes with Another participle, generally speaking, then that those things are you know the indicators of participle form. Is that clear? And then I think you guys haven't learned about the indicators of infinitive construct. I think this is important. Why? I, I told you this is important, especially today. If you have two words, you need to listen to me carefully. If you have two nouns appearing in a row standing side by side like this. And we have learned about construct chain. And what is the, the function of a construct chain? You need to put these two words together in English by putting of. So if you have A and B, then the translation will be A of B. So the indicator of this construct chain was shortening in the preceding word, generally speaking, not all the time. And there was a special bridge, bow point here, such as yod. If you have the preceding word and chere yod bridge, and then the following word, then that is the indicator of construct chain. But what is the special about this? This one makes A plurals. All right. So for example, okay, uh, the word of the Lord, then if you, if you see yod here as a bridge word, then you need to put words. Okay, words. And another thing you need to remember, ought, ought bridge. You have A and B, and then the bridge is ought. And then this is also indicator of infinitive construct, but uh, not infinitive construct, the construct chain. And then this one is feminine plural. Okay, 
But in case of ought, whenever you see ought ending, it doesn't really indicate the possibility of uh, construct chain because ought is always the absolute form, which means uh, it doesn't need to be related to you know those construct chain all the time. But if you have two nouns standing side by side, and and then when the first noun is taking oath ending, then you need to think about this possibility. Oh, there must be, or it's, it's, it might be a uh, construct chain. Then you need to understand it as a plural form. I think this is not a really new thing. I think it's, it's kind of a review of what you uh, have studied so far. Do you have any question? I think we, we cover pretty much everything. Any question? I feel, yeah, go ahead. Cognitive construct, uh, does that necessarily add a to something or of something? It's, it's almost a direction, isn't it? Oh, you, you just talk, talked, uh, reminded me of something important too. Okay, don't be confused with the direction, uh, directive here. If you have directive he, what do you mean by you have a noun and then ah he ending, then that indicates in directive he. So like eretz, eretza, aretza, then this one means to the land, toward land. So this is something important. I think this is important too, especially for today. So infinitives are um, construct. of, of constructs, of constructs. Right. Infinitive construct, then you need to put two. Two oh, or And then the meaning of the verb. Okay. All right. Good. All right, then. Uh, I didn't hear. Sorry, I mute myself. All right, are you guys ready to take your translation quiz? I just have I hope to print, so. I just have to print my my I hope so too. All right, be ready right now. Okay, sir, I'm just going to take I'm just going to print it. Clean up your table. It's clean. I don't know if you guys uh, took bath to consecrate yourself for this holy translation quiz. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, it's coming. I'm I'm showing it right now. Translation quiz, the third one. Oh, third one. Okay, this is only go two. to your Moodle. And now you can see, go to the uh, folder label translation quiz and you have translation quiz three. Okay. None yet. I still have two right now, but maybe I need to reset. Oh, it's coming. Just refresh, refresh, refresh. your uh, yes. yeah, screen. Okay, sir. Did you get it? And yes, sir. Repressing and repressing, but it. We're just going there. Yeah, it's going there, I guess. I'm just on the process. Oh. B O T. Where's B O T? Please let me know if you have it right now. Can't even find my. Hmm. Paul, you have? I see it. Oh, I didn't. Okay. I'm going to then um, show you right now so that you can just go ahead. It takes quite long. 
It's not even in the list of courses, your R class. I'm trying. Send in the chat, someone, if you need, you can download. Can you see this? Uh, I'm showing you on the yeah, screen. Yeah, I've got it now. It's in the middle now. Okay, good. Those who don't have it in the Moodle, you can just take a look at the screen. I'm showing it right now. Okay. Oh, there it is. I found it. I think. Here it is. Okay, print. Sure, only one in the screen, only one sentence. Yes, you have only one. All right, if we are done, please send it to me. And uh, I think you can personally send the file to me through Facebook Messenger. 
And if I give you the confirmation, then you can leave this study room right now. All right, um, James, I got it. Thank you, sir. All right, have a good weekend and gonna see you uh, next week. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, should I send it to your Facebook messenger? Uh, yeah, that would be better. Oh, okay. Yes, Pin, yes, I got it. Okay, sir. All right. Thank you, Kanae. I got it. All right, Amos, got it.
Okay, Stephen, I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Simpson, I got it. Thank you, Ami. Proceed. Thank you, sir. Okay. So I submitted to Moodle. Do you want me to um, email it to you as well? So um, you send it to my email, okay. Pierce. Sure. Where did you submit it? To Moodle. Yes. Oh yeah, that will be okay then. Thank you, Pierce. Okay. Yeah. Great. Have a good, good weekend. Night. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> Walter, yeah, I got it. Uh, yeah, I got it. Thank you.
All right, Albert, I got it. To send it through Messenger, sir? Yes, please. It's okay, take enough time. Yes, Chompi, I got it. Sorry, we cannot play soccer today. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. All right. Have a good weekend. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, in, um, yeah, Adele, I got it. Thank you. Okay. And uh, is that uh, who is this? Uh, this is our part. Yeah, Dominic, thank you. I receive it. Is that clear enough, sir? Or yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Thank right. you. Thank you, sir. So I'll put it in Moodle. Uh, let, me, let me just quickly check it, okay? Yeah, should I have to send you in, in uh, Messenger? Or? If you can send it to the Messenger, Facebook Messenger, that would be better. But if you, let me just go and check it. Yeah, some of the people did it. Just want to make sure all the files are in. Just give me one minute, okay? Yes, sir. I... Oh, okay.
sir? Yes. I realized I missed one box and I know the answer to it. Am I allowed to send it to you? Yeah, you can do it again. I'll send it to you now. Yeah. Thank you for the chance. No problem. Okay. Did you did you receive that? Oh. Let me see. I'm just um ah, okay, sorry. I need to turn back to my role. Now I'm almost there. Yes. I'm opening it. Let me just see the quality. It's very slow. Oh yeah, Jim, thank you, it's clear. I got it. Okay, okay. okay. have a good weekend. Thank you. I'm sending it again. All right. Send it through Messenger. All right. Yes, FL, I got it. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sir, I sent a message earlier through the chat. You sent what? I sent you a message privately through the chat. Oh, uh, today? Yeah. Where? Uh, After chat through the Zoom. Okay, let me check it. Through Zoom, through this Zoom. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yes. I need to send to you uh, via messenger also the vocabulary uh, quiz. You haven't submitted vocabulary Not quiz? Not yet, sir. I'm just done. 
Oh I yeah, just did At, today. it will be better for you to do it um, through Moodle. Can you do that? Oh, okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So I already uploaded it on the Moodle. Oh, okay. Pastor Paul, but can you personally send it to me through Messenger? Is oh, it hard? No problem, sir. Yes, I will appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Excuse me, sir. I didn't uh, know that uh, I need to uh, pass the vocabulary exam just before the class. Is it okay, sir, or it's late already? I'm sorry, I didn't get your question. Uh, I thought uh, we will do the vocabulary uh, quiz after the class, sir and uh, it seems like it's late already or it's okay so you haven't submitted your vocabulary quiz yes now sir because i did it now i did that do uh yeah before uh the class so you unloaded to the moodle yes uh, Penny, sir. i'm asking if uh, it's late already or it's okay it's okay yeah so but don't be okay, late sir. next time. Thank yeah, we, we don't understand you. Yes, sir. I, I... Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you All for right. understanding. Yeah, have a good rest. Good night, have sir. A... Thank you, good sir. Good night. God bless, sir. Have a great weekend. Good night, Pastor. See you next week. Have a good weekend. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, right. Uh, 목사님, 받았습니다. 감사합니다. 네. <laughs> 잘 지내시죠? 잘못 지내고 있습니다. <웃음> <웃음> 왜요? 박 목사님도 가고 <웃음> 외로움이 밀려가지고. <웃음> 아 박형준 목사님. 네. 이제 아무도, 아무도 없다라고 생각하니까 막 외.